Not long after, Tesla's money runs out. His main supporters either die or sever relations. As his anonymity increases, he continues with even more esoteric research. He was very much concerned with being able to utilize the phenomenon of resonance to do certain things, not the least of which was to uh, destroy certain materials. And that was evidenced later on by that uh, experiment he did on Wall Street where uh, the new building, steel building, was going up. And uh, he tried out one of his uh, resonators, nothing more than a, a mechanical vibrator that was battery operated, and set up a, a resonance in the steel beams to the point where it kept building up pushing a kid on a swing, you know, and keep pushing and a little push will take it a lot further every time. And he almost brought the building down, uh, scared the people who were working on it. They thought they were having an earthquake. And they went down and called the police and everything else. Tesla got <laughs> a little bit scared and picked up his equipment, <laughs> put it in his pocket and went home. <laughs> He had one other unfortunate incident, which today we would laugh at, but was very serious at the time. He picked up radio signals from space. You know, we know today, of course, that uh, planets radiate uh, RF noise and so forth. But when he announced this, it, was, uh, it just caused a sensation, and all the scientists said immediately, what a kook, you know, what a idiot. There were rumors you went to Colorado Springs in order to contact Mars, is that true? I never intended to. However, I recorded certain electrical impulses of unknown origin, and these were repeated at constantly timed intervals. It's possible they were a kind of signal from space. And did you in turn send them a message? Ask the Martians that question. No more questions, please. They got to thinking, I'm sure, well, he's talking crazy now. He's feeding pigeons in the park, and he's got this crazy idea of transmitting signals to Mars. And Tesla is so advanced in his thinking, so sensitive and eccentric, that few of his colleagues understand his work. He is perceived as snobbish and overconfident. He was ostracized, I think, primarily because of his difference and because of his radical statements and because of his pronouncements of great systems. They didn't have the foggiest notion of what he was talking about. Nikola Tesla saw many of his inventions scrutinized, then adopted by the military. However, it becomes apparent that as a citizen of the planet, Tesla ultimately serves a much higher authority. He met Swami Vivekananda in New York City in the late 1890s. Swami Vivekananda was probably the first yogi to come to this country with Eastern philosophy and present it to the West. It was at Swami Vivekananda's lectures that Tesla picked up the Sanskrit terminology, prana, akasha, and the concepts of the ether that led him to determine or actually led him to a point where he could describe succinctly the physics of the universe, the physics of matter creation in this dimension. In many of his letters, he wrote that if he were to choose a religion, it would be Buddhism. All his stories about his journeys in other worlds, about dreams, about machines that operated in his imagination, were manifestations similar to the experience of the shamans. It was known that his solutions came during a dream. Tesla's view of the universe, his cosmology, if I might call it that, is based on viewing life from a spiritual point of view. And it was in the science of the ancient works of the Vedas where he found the spiritual terminology to describe what he saw manifest in the physical world. What leads Tesla to this spiritual awakening may never be known. But it is not uncommon among those forward-thinking patrons of discovery, people like Robert Oppenheimer, father of the nuclear bomb, or Albert Einstein, that in the end, they recognized the singular perfection of the interconnected and life-imbuing system of our planet. He was trying to understand what the basics of energy and resonance were. What is the nature of the energy that's in the 
cosmos, what's the, what's the basic essence of the energies that come through nothingness to give us something. I think those were the questions that, were, that Tesla was intrigued with. When Tesla dies at the age of 87, his legacy of over 700 important patents slip into obscurity, forgotten by nearly everyone except the U.S. government. Tesla's possessions are sequestered in a government warehouse for 10 years following his death. Official reports confirm that the collection was microfilmed during this period. When contacted, however, no government agency revealed any information regarding these microfilms. After a decade, the government officially denies the existence of any secret weapons technologies included among the Tesla papers. Rumors nevertheless persist to this day. Whatever may have befallen Tesla's undeveloped discoveries, the inventions that remain contribute daily to our science, our medicine, and our environment. Perhaps this is what Tesla ultimately envisioned. Perhaps the missing secrets of Nikola Tesla are right where they belong. Tesla disagreed with scientists about some basic concepts of relativity theory and quantum mechanical theory. And he fell out of favor with the established scientists of the day. Tesla was very knowledgeable about quantum mechanics and Einstein's theory of relativity. Both were developed during his lifetime. And he suspected that sooner or later, quantum mechanics and relativity theorists would enter into a crisis. And that's why he used to say, the present time is theirs, but the future is mine. Sir Albert Einstein also said that once there's a bunch of little theories all over the world, there's a prelude to a major breakthrough in science and physics. I think that science today needs to take a new look at some of the theories of Tesla, because there is more to the universe than what we are looking at and what we're observing with our scientific instruments. We've reached a point in our conscious evolution of the species. We have the ability at our fingertips now to engineer and to manipulate space-time and gravity. We're on the threshold of a new technology. Nikola Tesla was the gatekeeper of lightning. Some of his ideas earned him a reputation as a fruitcake, some permanently rocked the world of science. Still others changed our planet and our lives. The next time you plug in your cable TV, remember the man who made it all possible. You might also imagine a world with free, unlimited energy and a world without wires, because that's what we lost when we lost the lightning of the Tesla. I'm Dean Stockwell, and these are the Phenomenon Archive.